I just made $600 in three and a half hours. That's crazy. All right, episode number one of a brand new series I like to call Furniture Talk. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Hope you're all doing really well out there. You see, I do a lot of documenting of Facebook Marketplace furniture flipping, but I don't really talk to you about the process of how I go about doing it. I'll show you my results at the end of the day, but I won't show you the steps along the way. So that's exactly what this series is gonna be about. I'm gonna dissect and break down a few different things, but in today's episode, we're gonna break down how to list a piece of furniture on Facebook Marketplace to get it out the door as quick as you possibly can. I really do hope that this series gets you into Facebook Marketplace furniture flipping. There's so much money to be made. These items go out the door in a really quick space of time, as long as you're doing the right things. So I'm gonna give you all of that over the next few weeks, but in today's episode, like I said, we're gonna dissect how to list and also how not to list. I'm gonna show you a good and a bad. I'm gonna use the example of my sale over the weekend, the $650 buffet, resulted in a $600 profit in a three and a half hour sale, and that's the potential for you guys out there. You can find these items and you can go on to sell them for a really high profit. So today, hope you enjoy it. Let's break it down. How to list an item of furniture on Facebook Marketplace to get the quickest, best result possible. So when it comes to listing on Facebook Marketplace, there's three main things that you've got to consider. You've got to get a really great title, you've got to get awesome photos, and you've got to put a really good description together as well. And the first thing that we'll look at is the title. And there's a few things that I do for every single piece of furniture that I sell. I do it in a certain way. And the first thing is I put an adjective, as you can see here on the example, I've used the word stunning to kick off the title. And what that's doing is it's putting it into the mind of the buyer that you've got a really good piece of furniture. It's in a stunning condition there's no damage to it if I'm seeing the word stunning I'm, I'm thinking that it's a really nice piece so it's putting that positive mindset into the buyer with an adjective to kick off the title it's really really important the next thing is I use descriptive words as well so you would see here that I've got silver wood because that's the style of furniture that I'm selling it's also a solid timber or a solid wood I'll often use those two terms if it's a veneer I probably won't mention it but solid wood is a great selling feature so I put that in there as well and then the fact that it's got three drawers and two doors they're really great features features of this buffet table, so that needs to go in as well. And then the fact that it is a buffet table. So they are all my descriptive words that I had for this piece, and I put that all in after the adjective. The next thing that I've started to do is I've started to put in, I guess, asterisks that I've got a free local delivery service. Now, if you're going to pick up the item initially to sell, you have the capability to offer the free delivery service. And I really do think when it comes to furniture, you've got to have yourself in that mindset because you're gonna get the deal done quicker. There's more people out there not willing to come and pick it up than there is that do want to. So you've got to think, what can I do to get the deal done faster? I can offer delivery. I can go to them and get the deal done. What you can do with the price is just build in what that delivery fee would be. So you're not really out of pocket. And I do think it's just such a strong selling feature. And if you're gonna put it into the description later on, you may as well put it into the title just so they can see everything all at once. And then the last thing that I've started to do is obviously through research to work out exactly what the piece of furniture is that you've bought. If you can track it down and you can find a recommended retail price, put that into the uh, title as well, because that will just highlight the fact that it is a very valuable piece of furniture. Furniture generally goes for two, three, four hundred, five hundred dollars plus. This piece was actually a $1,300 furniture piece. So I had to make sure that that was referenced in the title and also in the photos a little bit later on. So it's just a few crucial things. That's everything. That's the standard sort of a layout for me when it comes to listing a piece of furniture. I'm making sure that everything is encapsulated in the title so they don't even need to read the description. They can just jump into the photos to make sure they're happy and then it's good to go. All right, so we've nailed the title. The next thing we're gonna do is go and take really, really good photos because they're crucial. Title and photos alone will sell you your piece of furniture if you do it right. So the way I like to do my photos is first of all, I love to give it a really good clean and a really good polish. Now when it comes to cleaning, I use sugar soap and I use gumption with hot water. That's all you need. And I've got the links below that shows you what those items are. The next thing I also do is O-Cedar 
uh, furniture polish. I finished the job by polishing it up to make it that really bright, presentable look. Once I've got it all clean, prepped and ready to go, I bring it into the house and I try to put it into a position in the house that's really well lit. It's got great light, whether it's natural light or really good house lighting. I just make sure that it is a bright room that I'm putting it in, but it's also a room that fits the furniture piece that I'm trying to sell. If I've got bedside tables, I'm trying to find the right room, the right bedroom to put it in. If it's an entertainment unit, it's going in the living room or a buffet table it's going to the side of the living room, but it's always in a well-lit space, so it can be clearly shown up well in photos. So crucial that you're putting it into the right area. The next thing that you've got to do is you've got to remove any clutter out of the photo. Anything that doesn't represent what your item is in its best light needs to be removed. If you've got an entertainment unit sitting on top of, and there's a TV sitting on top, get rid of that. You don't, you don't need that. You want to declutter, but you do want to add in a few features that can maybe help present the item a little bit better as well. I used in this photo here, I used a nice photo frame to center the buffet table. I used a runner and some small ornaments as well, just to kind of make it pop a little bit. But anything that's like strewn or loose around the place, that's lying on the floor, just get rid of all of that and make it a really clean, presentable photo with just the item itself and then the selling features and the add-ons that you can do, like the ornaments and the runners, etc. So you want to be making sure that you're doing all of that and then finally you want to be making sure that you're taking multiple shots so I've personally used about nine photos in this listing to get this one done don't use one or two make sure you capture every single angle of the piece of furniture you're trying to sell if it has doors take a photo with the doors open if it's got drawers open the drawers and show that the drawers work by taking them out to their full capacity they are very very crucial photos when it comes to selling your item it just shows that it's in good working order and then finally I will always add in a RRP a recommended retail price of the item if you can find the ad on Online, take a screenshot, make that the last photo in your run of photos. So it shows everything that you've got to sell and then it shows the recommended retail at $1,300 for this example. And then when they're seeing it at $650 and looking at it retail at $1,300 and seeing that yours is in great polished clean condition, they're likely to want to go ahead and buy it. So the final step is writing a really good description and I will continue to say that I do think it is your photos and I do think it is your title that you have to nail when you're trying to sell a piece of furniture, but you've got to make sure that you're putting in a really good description as well. And if you have a look at the example of my description, I really haven't changed too much from what the title actually presented. I've said that I'm selling this stunning silverwood buffet table in excellent condition. It has two large storage cabinets and three drawers for additional storage and it has an impressive finish. I've written $13.99, it should have been $12.99 with the RRP and I've said grab a bargain. So really that's just everything that the title was put into sentence format. And from there, I've added the dimensions, which is probably the most important part of creating this section of the listing. You've got to make sure that you're putting in the length, the width, and the height. It's a very easy calculation. Grab the tape measure, it takes two seconds. But if you don't add the dimensions into your listing, it's very unlikely that it will sell. So when you're writing your description, make sure that dimensions are in there. And then finally, put in pickup, suburb, and then reiterate the fact that you are offering that free local delivery service in case they somehow missed it in the title. But they are really crucial steps when it comes to building that description. You wanna make sure that there is something in there. You wanna be making sure that you're putting your title into sentence format, putting in the dimensions, and then telling them where you can pick up your item in case they wanna have a look at it before you deliver it. And then probably the only thing that I haven't spoken about is how to actually price the item that you've got. Like, how do you know what to price it at? And really there's no actual answer. There's no formula, there's no, hey, because you bought this, go and list it for this. It's really just trial and error. It's guesswork and it's putting a price out there that you think you would like to get for it. For me personally, I think $100 profit is just a great result if I'm flipping pieces of furniture. So I'll always try to buy around the $50 and sell it for around 150 to 200. But ultimately, if that's what I wanna get out of it, the market will tell me at the end of the day whether or not I can actually get that result. So by putting up a certain price that you would like to get, checking the views, the saves and the shares on your item and how many questions you might get on your listing will determine whether or not you've priced it accurately. If it sells in a really fast amount of time, like my buffet table in three and a half hours, maybe I went under at 650 and I could have got 800, 850. I hope to find another one because I'll certainly give it a go at a slightly higher price. But the reason or the way I came up with $650 was just It'd be great to profit 600 bucks from this piece of furniture. It's worth 1300, so let's market it at half price and see if we can move it at half price. 
if I didn't get any inquiries, any views, any saves or shares, that, that price would have dropped over the next few days to 500 to 400 to 300 until it's sold. So always keep an update and keep an eye on how much traction your listing's getting at the price that you set it at. But if you're buying it at a very low price like $50, any quality piece of furniture is generally worth sort of 150 plus. So you're gonna make your $100 plus no matter what when it comes to furniture, if you're buying them at that low end price of around $50. Now you might think that some of those topics were pretty common sense, pretty straightforward. Yeah, of course, you need to take great photos and a good title and a rock solid description, but you would be amazed if you scroll through Facebook Marketplace on a daily basis like I do and just see how many people are not doing that. A perfect example of how people aren't doing it is this photo right here. And this was the listing that I bought the buffet table off on Friday. And I just wanted to highlight a few things to kind of reiterate the points that I'm trying to make around the listing that we just went through. If you have a look at this photo, they've literally just put a photo up with five different items. So I can see my buffet table up in the top right hand corner. There's a table, there's some chairs, there's actually a clothes rack, and then there's some curtains. There's really five items of furniture all in the one photo. So I actually don't know what I'm buying off that photo alone. The title doesn't help me either. It just says household items. So I don't, again, I don't know what I'm, I'm potentially buying. And then they've said free, and free is a really big red flag. I, I never like to put a listing up that says free. It does two things. One, people actually think that it is free. And then two, the offers that you wanna get for it are always gonna be low ball. People aren't gonna be giving you a genuinely good offer. So you're always gonna go under what you could have potentially got for it by putting it up for offers. So I really don't think you should ever be doing that. Um, there was yeah, pretty much three red flags there. The, the main photo, the title, and the price was all wrong. Um, if we have a look at some of the photos, certainly the first photo that I wanted to highlight was the entertainment unit. It, it's a really off-centered um, photo. And as you can see, there's a lot of clutter. Um, they need to remove the magazines, remove the remote. They need to remove the TV or the half TV that they've positioned. They've got way too much carpet in the photo. They should maybe even put a rug down if they wanted to use that photo dimension. Um, so the photos were off. And finally, they've used just one photo for every single individual piece of furniture. So three pieces of furniture that are trying to sell here and only three photos. Um, and then finally, as well in the dimensions, um, I had a look at the description. There were no dimensions in there. So I don't actually know the size to fit my own property. Uh, so it was uh, no wonder that um, you know, they, they weren't gonna get a sale out of this in a really quick space of time, uh, even with the urgency that they put into their listing um, because they, they just didn't give enough information and they didn't show enough in their photos. So a lot of red flags and this is an incredibly common example around the laziness of creating a listing and then the ongoing complaints and anger as to why Facebook Marketplace is a bad site to use to try and sell anything. It's the little things that just aren't being done that is resulting in the furniture and the listing sitting for a longer period than it needs to. If you do the little things right, you'll move your piece of furniture a whole lot quicker and hopefully by going through the three stages of a listing in this video today, you can now go and really make your listings even better than they already were and sell your pieces of furniture incredibly fast because people are looking for it out there. Facebook Marketplace is a great space to sell furniture and you can get a really big profit if you buy at the right price and you can get them done in a really quick space of time. So hope you've enjoyed that one today, guys. Episode number one of Furniture Talk all ticked off and hopefully a few more episodes like this that will talk all things furniture flipping uh, to come over the next few weeks. So thanks very much for tuning into this one, guys. I look forward to catching you in the next episode. We'll see you then. Oh, 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 oh,